Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. All of you, please switch on your videos. Please switch on your videos. Okay, thank you all. So in our last class, we discussed about the Newton's second law of motion, right? Newton's second law of motion. And we just started the derivation, mathematical derivation for the Newton's second law of motion. So Lakshmi, Lakshmi Nandakumar, tell me the Newton's second law of motion. State the Newton's second law of motion. Yes. Okay, then what do you mean by momentum? Momentum. Same question to uh, Nandana. State the second law of motion, Newton's second law of motion. Nandana Sharat. And the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional. Uh, to the applicable uh, applicate of uh, force and takes the place in direction of the force. Okay, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and which is takes place in the direction of that applied force. This is what is known as Newton's second law of motion. So Newton's second law of motion introduced a new quantity, new physical quantity into this uh, chapter that is what is known as momentum. What do you mean by momentum, Anandita? What do you mean by momentum? It's the quantity of motion in a body and it uh, depends on the mass and velocity. Mass and velocity. And what is the exact definition for uh, momentum? It is the product of mass and velocity. Okay, good. Surya Dev, mathematical equation for calculating momentum. Mathematical equation. Momentum, for, uh, momentum is equal to mass into velocity. Okay, and how we can represent it in a letter form? But which letter is used to represent momentum? P. P. P is equal to M into uh, V. P is equal to M V. Okay, all right, good. The next one, uh, who is here? Alson. What about the SI unit of momentum? SI unit of momentum. Fadil, same question. SI unit of momentum. Nivedia Rose, SI unit of momentum. One kilogram meter per second. Okay, it is kilogram meter per second. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Okay, so SI unit of mass is kilogram. SI unit of velocity is meter per second. So when we are combining these two units, we get the SI unit for momentum that is kilogram meter per second. And can you identify the type of physical quantity? Is it a scalar or vector? It's vector. It's a vector quantity because momentum possesses both magnitude and a direction. So we can say momentum is a vector quantity. Okay. So my next question, if the what about the momentum of a object which is at rest? Momentum of an object. Zero. Yes. Zero. Momentum of an object which is at rest is equal to zero because a stationary object doesn't possess any kind of velocity. The velocity of a stationary object is equal to zero. So we can say the momentum possessed by a stationary object or the object at rest is equal to zero. And in the last class, we just derived the mathematical equation for the Newton's second law of motion. We are not completing it. So once again, we can discuss or we can once again we can go through all these different steps so according to our second law the rate of change of momentum the rate of change of momentum what do you mean by rate of change of momentum change in momentum or sorry or change of momentum divided by time taken change of momentum divided by time taken rate of change of momentum means Change in momentum with respect to time. Change in momentum with respect to time. 
so change of momentum or change in momentum divided by time taken change in momentum the time taken to change that momentum change in momentum divided by time taken change in momentum by time taken is directly proportional to the applied force change in momentum by time taken is directly proportional to applied force again what do you mean by change in momentum change in momentum what do you mean by change in momentum difference in momentum that is change in momentum means difference between final momentum and initial momentum momentum is represented by the letter p so we can write p final minus p initial it is the difference between final momentum and initial momentum change in momentum divided by time taken is directly proportional to the applied force change in momentum means final momentum minus initial momentum again the general expression for momentum is given by p is equal to md the general expression for momentum is p is equal to md okay then what about the expression for final momentum how we can calculate final momentum mass into velocity is known as momentum similarly here we want to calculate final momentum mass, mass into final velocity very good mass into final velocity again m into v so it becomes m capital v minus what about the initial momentum p initial m, m into u yes m into u mass into initial velocity so because here we consider the initial momentum initial momentum means it is the product of mass and initial velocity so it becomes mu okay so change in momentum means final momentum minus initial momentum that is mv minus mu change in momentum means difference between the final momentum and that of the initial momentum the general expression for momentum is product of mass into velocity mv if it is final momentum it is a product of mass and final velocity so it is mv if it is initial momentum product of mass and initial velocity so it is mu so the expression becomes equation our equation becomes f is proportional to change in momentum means mv minus mu divided by time taken which letter we are used to represent the time t t mm. so f is proportional to mv minus mu divided by t or we can write f is proportional to which term is common in this numerator m is m yes the term m is common so we can take it outside m into v minus u divided by t f is proportional to m into v minus u by t so here we get f is proportional to m into v minus u divided by t are you familiar with the second term what yes. is v yes, yes very good v minus u by t is nothing this is represent our acceleration that is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time the rate of change of velocity is known as acceleration so we can replace the second term with the acceleration so it becomes f is directly proportional to mass into acceleration f is proportional to ma okay so this is our proportionality sign in physics we always have a tendency to replace this proportionality sign with the help of a constant okay so while by introducing a constant we can replace this proportionality sign so in the next step we are going to replace this proportionality sign by introducing a constant that is f is equal to f is equal to f equal to instead of this proportionality sign here it becomes equal to by introducing a constant here that proportionality constant is known as k 
F is equal to K into MA. So here we introduce this K in order to replace this proportionality sign in terms of equal to. So then only the false term become equivalent to mass into acceleration. So that proportionality constant is known as K, just a variable. We consider a letter, a variable K as a proportionality constant here. So our equation become F is equal to K M A, where K is known as the proportionality constant. K is the proportionality constant. And here, the value of K is equal to one. It is a proportionality constant. So it must possess a constant value. Its value is equal to one. Then what about the equation for force F is equal to? If K is equal to one, that is from this equation, mm -hmm. we get F is equal to K into M into A. Here K is the proportionality constant. This is equal to one. So our equation become F is equal to? M A. M -A. Very good. F is equal to M A. So from the second equations of motion, from the Newton's second law of motion, we get an expression for force. What do you mean by force? Force is the product of mass into acceleration. It is the product of mass and acceleration. This is the basic equation for calculating the force acting on a body. The force acting on a body is given by F is equal to MA, where M is the mass of the object. And what about A? If M is the mass, A is the acceleration. Very good. Acceleration. So the second law of motion, Newton's second law of motion gives a mathematical equation for calculating force. So here in the second chapter, we are introducing a new physical quantity force. And in the very beginning of the class, we find a definition for force. It is the push or pull that is acting on a body or it is an external influence which is acting on a body that is responsible for uh, its changes, the change in the size and shape of that moving body or any object at rest and all. That is what is known as force. And there are different types of forces are there, such as balanced for force and unbalanced force. But from the Newton's second law of motion, we derive a mathematical equation for calculating that force. It is given by F is equal to MA, where M is the mass, A is the acceleration. Okay, so from this equation, students, can you guess how the mass is related to force? If the mass of the object is uh, large, what about the force acting on it or the force which is required to push that object or pull that object? It must be larger. Yes, very good. It must be larger because from this equation, it is clear that force is directly proportional to mass. If larger the mass, large force is needed to move that object. If it is in a state of rest, we need to apply a large push on that body, then only it is moves from its rest position. Or if the object is moving, if an object with a greater mass is moving, we need to apply a large force on it, then only it is stops. Okay, so from this equation, it is clear that force is directly proportional to mass. Then the second physical quantity is acceleration. How it is related to force? Is it is directly proportional or inversely proportional? Acceleration. Acceleration means rate of change of velocity. That is whenever the velocity increases, acceleration is also increases. So if you are uh, saying acceleration of a body is large, then what about the nature of force we need to apply the such of such kind of object needs to be large yes the force is also needs to be large so here from the equation itself we can see it is very clear that all these terms are in one line they are aligned the straight lines so here we can say mass is directly proportional to force 
acceleration is also directly proportional to force. So if an object is moving with a greater acceleration, a greater force needed to stop that object. Okay, so from this equation, we can draw two conclusion. The first one, force is directly proportional to mass. Force is directly proportional to mass. The second conclusion, force is directly proportional to what? Acceleration. Yes, force is directly proportional to acceleration. So you must study this equation for calculating the force that is F is equal to MA. This is very, very important relation. Acceleration. F is equal to MA. This equation we are used to calculate the force that is acting on a body. Now from this mathematical equation, we can derive a mathematical unit for force. There is an SI unit for force. Did you remember what is the SI unit of force? Newton. Yes, very good. Newton is the SI unit of force. But from this mathematical equation, we can form a mathematical unit for force. What is the SI unit of mass? Kg. Uh, yes, it is kg, kilogram. Adigesh, what about the SI unit of acceleration? Meter per second square. Meter per second square. Now you just combine these two units. It becomes kilogram, kilogram meter, meter per second square. Okay, so kilogram meter per second square is the mathematical unit for force. It is not the SI unit. SI unit of force is Newton. But the mathematical unit for force is kilogram meter per second. And this mathematical unit of force that is kilogram meter per second is equivalent to that of the Newton. But in general, we are saying Newton is the SI unit. Kilogram meter per second square is the mathematical unit. Both are the units of our force, the physical quantity force. So force versus two units, one is Newton, the second one is kilogram meter per second square. Okay, Newton is the SI unit of force, kilogram meter per second square is the mathematical unit for force. Don't make the confusion, kilogram meter per second square. Kilogram meter per second square is the mathematical unit of force. You, in the previous class, you study one another equation, kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meter per second is the SI unit of what? Momentum. It is the momentum. SI unit of momentum. Okay, so here we have a square, kilogram meter per second square. Kilogram meter per second square is the mathematical unit for force. Kilogram meter per second is the mathematical unit for momentum. Is it clear? Ma'am, SI unit 3. SI unit of force is Newton. Ma'am, momentum. Okay, okay, momentum. SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. Sorry. So force have two units. One is Newton. It is represented by letter N. This is the SI unit. The second one is kilogram meter per second square. This is the mathematical unit. Now for momentum, the SI unit is kilogram meter per second. Okay, we just kept these points in your mind. Now we are going to discuss the applications of second law of motion. Application of second law of motion. So the second law is also a relation between force and acceleration. Okay, second law gives the relationship between force and acceleration. So here you have the applications of Newton's second law of motion. The first one is this. A cricket player moves his hand backwards on 
catching a fast moving cricket ball so i think i hope that all of you are watching the cricket match right whenever the uh, the catcher is catch the cricket ball he just move or the pull the hands to backwards this is actually the, because of the applications of newton's second law of motion the explanation is given here why the fielder moves his hand backward on catching the fast moving cricket ball because a fast moving cricket ball has a large momentum in stopping the cricket ball its momentum has to be reduced to zero otherwise sometimes it may be cause injury to his hands okay so in order to avoid this equation we must or we should reduce the momentum possessed by this fast moving cricket ball so when a player moves his hands the time taken to stop the ball increases and hence the rate of change of momentum is decreases that is the force exerted by the ball on the hand decreases so the hands of the player do not get hurt 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 a cricket player moves his hands backwards on catching fast moving cricket ball the reason a fast moving cricket ball has a large momentum because we know that cricket ball is something that which possess a large mass and it is also comes from a large distance it possess a large acceleration or velocity velocity possessed by the cricket ball is also large we know that momentum is the product of mass and velocity both are directly proportional to the term momentum mass and velocity is directly proportional to momentum if greater the mass greater will be the momentum if greater the velocity greater will be the momentum so a fast moving cricket ball has a large momentum in order to stop this fast moving cricket ball with a large momentum we need to reduce the momentum to zero so for that the player moves his hand backwards so whenever he moves his back uh, hands backward what happens the time taken to stop the ball increases as a result the velocity decreases so we, thereby we can reduce the momentum of that fast moving cricket ball to zero so correlate all these points one by one you just imagine the cricket match and how this fielder catches the ball and correlate all these sentences with the action of the fielder a fast moving cricket ball is comes with a large momentum in order to stop that large momentum possessed by the cricket ball we need to uh, reduce the momentum of the ball to zero for that we need to pull the hands to backwards then what happens the time taken to catch the ball increases as a result the velocity possessed by the ball decreases if the velocity decreases so we can say the rate of change of momentum possessed by the ball is also decreases so from here the ball is comes with a large momentum whenever we whenever we pull the hands backwards the time increases to catch the ball whenever it is reaches here velocity goes on decreasing velocity is goes on decreasing as the velocity decreases the rate of change of momentum of the body is also decreases so we can catch the ball if the momentum decreases then we can say that the force exerted by the ball is also decreases so we can catch the ball or the player can catch the ball without hurt him or without causing any injuries
Is it over? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. Now the second application: a high jumping or long jumping applet is provided, either a cushion or a heap of sand on the ground to fall upon. A high jumping or long jumping applet is provided, either a cushion. Normally, not a cushion. It is in in Olympic seasons they are provided a cushion. Otherwise, in youth festivals and all, they are provided a heap of sand. normal sports games they are provided with a heap of sand on the ground to fall upon this is also because of our newton second law of motion the cushion or sand helps to increase the time in which the momentum comes to zero this decreases the rate of change of momentum and hence the force so the athletes does not get hurt so the basic reason behind all these applications are if you are increases the time taken to stop that object then what happens the velocity is also automatically decreases if the velocity decreases then the momentum possessed by that moving body is decreases so we can overcome that injury caused by that object moving body so if you are providing with a cushion or a sand it is helps to increase the time in which the momentum comes to zero the high jumper or a long jumper or a long jumping athlete he is coming with a large momentum but whenever the, we are using a cushion or sand heap heap of sand it increases the time thereby we can reduces the velocity if the velocity reduces to zero momentum automatically reduces to zero this decreases the rate of change of momentum and hence the force so we can uh, uh, avoid the injuries during this long jump or high jump study one or two applications of each laws here we discuss mainly three laws newton's first law of motion newton's second law of motion and newton's third law of motion study the explanation also explanations and applications of any two applications any two applications and explanation of each laws the third application packing materials like whenever we are packing the uh, materials like glassware chinaware or uh, electronic devices etc we are using some packing materials like thermocol corrugated sheets bubbled plastic sheets straw paper strands etc this is because these materials helps to increase the time in which the momentum comes to zero when jolting and jerking takes place you don't need to copy this jolting jerking whenever the jerking is takes place this decreases the rate of change of momentum and hence the force so the articles do not get broken you know that the china wires and glass wires if it is kept without any proper packing there is a chance to broken whenever the jerking is occurs so in order to avoid that normally we are used to pack it with some kind of materials like thermocol normally we are using thermocols or bubbled plastic sheets whenever we bro uh, um, brought some new electric electronic appliances we can see this bubbled plastic sheets along with them this is actually to uh, avoid the momentum thereby the broken caused by these devices packing materials like thermocol corrugated sheets bubbled plastic sheets straw paper strands etc are used 
while packing glassware chinaware electronic devices etc these materials helps to increase the time so in the second ap application we are using cushion or heap of sand these materials are increases the time whenever the time increases the rate of change of velocity decreases if the velocity decreases momentum possessed by the object is also decreases hence the force applied on also will become reduced all these are from the basic law of momentum we know that p is equal to mv all are directly proportional whenever the velocity increases momentum is also increases so in order to reduce the momentum the only way either we reduces decreases the velocity possessed by that moving body if the velocity decreases this is a normal procedure is happens velocity decreases which indicates momentum decreases if momentum decreases which quantity is automatically increase automatically decrease that is here the force force applied on the object is automatically decreases so by increasing the time velocity decreases whenever the velocity decreases the momentum possessed by the object decreases if momentum decreases which indicates the force that is exerted on that particular object also automatically decreases this is the same thing is happens in all these three cases so out of these three applications you may study any two applications in detail now we have one more law we can discuss the third newton's third law of motion in our next class i think the newton's third law of motion is familiar to all sometimes it may be if it is a regular class we can practice this newton's third law of motion in our class out of these three laws the most simple and the easiest law is the newton's third law it is very easy to remember <laughs> 